Hi, I'm Kalex, and this video is part of a series where I attempt to teach the basics of how to do your own theory crafting in World of Warcraft. In this video, I'm going to be talking about analytical methodology. Analytical methodology is the study of methods used to conduct analysis. Now, unlike the other videos in this series where my goal is to teach you a particular analytical technique, such as using raid bots or how to analyze combat logs, the purpose of this video is to make sense of these methods of analysis. The ways in which we try to find answers to questions affects the answers that we can and will find. I believe that it is important to understand the ways that each method affects the answers that you will find, and doing so will allow you to ask better questions as well as save time by knowing which techniques are best suited to answer the question that you're asking. The key points that I want you to take away from this video are this. 1. All analytical methods and tools are bad. 2. You should try to use the methods and tools that are the least bad for your particular situation. 3. The goal of analysis is to provide insights that impact the decisions that you make. And 4. Your simulations and models are not World of Warcraft. Now, if you want to understand the meaning behind these points and why I think they are so important to people interested in theorycrafting and some of the underlying implications that come with these points, then I suggest that you grab a snack or a drink, get comfy, and buckle up. Because as you can tell by the length of this video, I've got a lot to say. Because I like to start from first principles, I want to begin by discussing accuracy and precision. Accuracy is how close your calculations or models are to the actual answer. And precision is how close your calculation is to all of the other times that you've done that particular calculation. Now, obviously, the best case scenario is to be both accurate and precise. But when attempting to model complex systems such as combat and WoW, that's not usually possible. Instead, it's necessary to decide which is more important to you and to try and optimize for that. Regardless of whether you choose to optimize for accuracy or precision, there are flaws that are associated with that choice. Which flaws and issues you choose to accept as a cost of just doing theorycrafting and which ones you want to avoid is a judgment call that you need to make for yourself. Now, personally, I greatly prefer precision over accuracy with my analysis and theorycrafting, and here's why. Let's pretend that we had a device that we give a ball and it shoots that ball at a target. And let's also pretend that this device had 50 settings that we could adjust, and some of them influence where the ball would hit the target, and some don't. And we also have no idea what each setting does. Academically, this is what we would call a black box system. Our goal with this device is to figure out how to consistently hit the center of the target. When you shoot balls at the target with the same settings, if the device is precise, then you will consistently hit the target in a tight grouping. If you adjust the settings and shoot another set of balls, it will create a second distinct grouping that is different than the first grouping if the settings you change had an impact on where the ball would hit the target. Differentiability is your ability to tell that two things are different. So as you increase precision, your ability to see the difference made by minute changes increases as well. If the device is accurate but not precise, then in order for us to tell what the impact of changing the settings was, we're going to need to shoot a lot more balls at the target. And even then, it may be extremely difficult to tell what the change was. I can actually bring this absurd topic back to WoW for a moment with this justification. Most of the time, the questions that we're trying to answer with theorycrafting are relative questions rather than absolute questions. What I mean by this is that most of the time, what we want to know is, is X better than Y? Is this chess piece that I got better than the one that I've been using? Is this talent better than this other talent? We typically aren't asking, how much DPS does this chess piece provide? Or how much DPS does this talent give? Because the outputs from precise modeling are more differentiable, I believe that they are better suited for answering relative questions. Now, this does not mean that you can't answer relative questions by first answering an absolute question, because you definitely can, and in some circumstances, it may be the easier way to achieve the results that you're looking for. I'll talk more about this later. A big philosophical assumption that I make is that I don't believe that it is possible to be perfectly accurate initially. I liken this to when you build something that you've designed to fit inside a certain space that you've measured, rarely does it fit exactly like it's supposed to, and you usually need to end up doing some sanding or some other form of adjustment to get it to fit the way that you want it to. The results after you made those adjustments to get it to fit in reality is what I refer to as second order accuracy. To be a bit more direct, when you use a model to get some output, that output rarely fits exactly with reality, and to make it a better fit with reality, adjustments need to be made. This means that there are two types of accuracy. The accuracy of the output the model gave you, and the accuracy of the output after you did some adjustments to it. 
For anyone who has done target shooting, if your point of aim is on the center of the target, but your shots are grouping low into the left, you could re-zero your sights so that your point of aim and your point of impact were the same, which for this analogy would be equivalent to changing the properties of the model that you're using. Or you could compensate for this error by shifting your aim up and right. The accuracy of your shots after adjusting your point of aim is the second order accuracy. I believe that it is easier to attain better second order accuracy by prioritizing precision first as high precision makes it easier to know the ways in which the output can be adjusted. Now, just because this is my preference does not mean that it's the right way to do things. I accept that it is incredibly arrogant to assume that I can know exactly what adjustments need to be made. In the example that I've laid out of trying to hit the center of the target with this device that shoots balls at it, it's easily knowable how far away from the middle we are and in what direction away from the middle the hits were. Attaining second order accuracy requires you to know or make guesses about these two things. You need to know the directionality of the way in which the model is wrong, and you also need to know how far off in that direction the model is wrong in order to counteract those problems. Figuring this out is not a simple task. It frequently takes a lot of time and attention to detail, and it also requires you to have a deep understanding of the process that was used to come to the result it gives, regardless of whether or not the tool is precise or accurate. Now, I accept that most people aren't interested in doing that, and I'm also a weirdo who likes trying to figure out how these tools work, and I'm also willing to put in that sort of effort. So that's why I prefer precision over accuracy, but just because that's my preference does not mean that you should copy what I do. Be honest with yourself about what sorts of processes do you like doing in order to get answers. There are many questions that I know how to answer, but whenever possible, I try to avoid having to do that simply because the way that you generate those answers is not an enjoyable process for me. Now, I touched on this briefly in the Raidbots video of this series, but there are two ways to model combat in World of Warcraft. Probabilistic modeling, also known as simulation, and deterministic modeling, also known as formulation. To illustrate the difference, pretend that you had some game where you would roll 10 dice and then add up all of the numbers that you rolled. If you were tasked with figuring out which result is the most likely for you to see, there's two primary ways that you could approach answering this question. You could try to calculate the answer using math, or you could just roll the dice a bunch of times and see how often each of the possible outcomes occur. Deterministic modeling is analogous to calculating the answer, and probabilistic modeling is analogous to rolling the dice. To give examples that apply to WoW, back in Wrath of the Lich King and Cataclysm, there was a tool called Lancel's Spreadsheet. That spreadsheet used deterministic modeling to try and model warrior talents and gear choices so that you could try to figure out what was best. SimCraft, on the other hand, uses probabilistic modeling with the same goals in mind. Now, there are advantages and disadvantages to both strategies. The SimCraft GitHub has an excellent write-up detailing these advantages and disadvantages, which is linked in the video description. If you're one of the eight or so people that will ever make it this far into the video, firstly, I want to say you're amazing. And secondly, I highly recommend reading this document as it has a clear bias in the direction of preferring accuracy. And I believe it does an excellent job of making quality arguments that balance out my bias for precision. The most important difference between these two approaches, in my opinion, is that deterministic modeling optimizes for precision, whereas probabilistic modeling optimizes for accuracy. A deterministic model will always give you a consistent answer, and small changes to the inputs will consistently give different results. However, if there are any errors in the calculations, then these models will consistently give you a wrong answer. A probabilistic model, on the other hand, will on average give you the right answer eventually, but small changes might not produce a noticeably different result. Now, because probabilistic modeling is effectively just like rolling the dice, the answers that it gives are affected by randomness. To use our dice rolling example, it's entirely possible that you could roll those 10 dice 10 times and every single time they would all land on 6. But as you keep rolling more and more, the proportions of each outcome that you see tend to get closer to the actual probability. In my opinion, because deterministic modeling optimizes for precision, this means that they're good at answering relative questions. Additionally, this means that you don't necessarily need to account for all of the variables that an accurate tool would need to, and is therefore an excellent choice when you have a single relative question that you want to ask. You can immediately jump into dealing with the variables that you're actually interested, and you can get to that answer pretty quickly. However, each time you ask a different relative question, you essentially need to create a new tool or metric to answer that specific question. Therefore, if you're trying to ask a whole bunch of relative questions, then you're either going to need to get really clever with the questions that you're trying to ask so that you can try to reduce the number of answers that you need to generate, or you're going to have to do a whole bunch of work to answer all these questions. Additionally, in order to do deterministic modeling, you must already know the question that you're trying to answer. 
This matters a lot if you're intending to share this tool with the general public, as it means that you're going to have to anticipate the questions that they're going to try to use the tool to answer. On the other hand, because probabilistic modeling optimizes for accuracy, creating a reasonably useful model requires a tremendous amount of overhead. But once you have created that model, asking new questions rarely requires a modification of the tool. And in those rare circumstances where modification is necessary, it's typically only a modification of the data that it outputs rather than to the way that the model generates that data. This makes each additional question that you ask it decrease the total amount of effort per question asked. In order to achieve accuracy, these tools attempt to account for every possibility, and this allows them to be flexible in that the authors do not need to know the questions that are going to be asked of the model, which is especially valuable for tools that are going to be shared with the general public, because you simply can let the model generate the results and provide users with all the data that it outputs and let them use that data to answer whatever questions they want to ask. To use a bit of a mathy summarization of the strengths and weaknesses of deterministic and probabilistic modeling, as you increase the number of questions you want to ask your model, the total amount of effort required to generate those answers scales roughly linearly for deterministic modeling, whereas probabilistic modeling scales logarithmically. Now, at this point in the video, you've listened to me talk for roughly 2100 words of my script, and only now do I feel like I've properly set the table and built a nice big house of cards on that table. And after all my ramblings on accuracy versus precision and deterministic versus probabilistic, I'm finally ready. It's time to burn this house of cards down. Raidbots revolutionized theorycrafting because of how easy it made adjusting the character details in SimCraft and doing thousands of combinations of simulations. This meant that everyone could do their own theorycrafting and not just weirdos like me and all of you who have made it to this point in the video who may be willing to do a bunch of tedious work just to find answers to analytical questions. Even though I have a slew of petty grievances with it because of the type of modeling that it does, I still use SimCraft and Raidbots regularly. There is one grievance that I have that I believe rises above the label of being merely petty. However, this grievance is mainly directed at the many people who do theorycrafting using these tools rather than at the tools themselves, though I do believe that these tools and the tool makers exacerbate the issue. There is a famous painting called The Treachery of Images by René Magritte. This painting is commonly known as the This Is Not A Pipe painting, because it is a painting of a pipe, and underneath the pipe is some text that is French but translates to This Is Not A Pipe. This painting is the encapsulation of why I think analytical methodology is so important, and why I believe so many theorycrafters are wasting a lot of effort that could be better placed. Using any tool or technique to model World of Warcraft is not World of Warcraft. It's a painting of World of Warcraft. Just because it looks like a pipe doesn't mean that you can use it like a pipe. People get so caught up in focusing on optimizing for what the tool says that they forget that they aren't optimizing for World of Warcraft, they're optimizing for a painting of World of Warcraft. I believe that tools like SimCraft are exquisitely accurate at modeling what players can do, but these simulations do not accurately model what combat looks like. The people who made and also maintain SimCraft know this, but many theorycrafters don't keep this fact in the forefront of their minds, and they end up forgetting it. If every fight had zero mechanics and we could just stand there and blast just like The Sims, then every single player would just get one of those add-ons that tells you exactly what button is most optimal given your APO at that exact moment, and they would just push that button and that would be that. But that's not how this game works. All good analysis needs to be actionable. That is, the analysis should be able to influence your decision making on how to play the game. The less like reality your model is, the less actionable your analysis will be. To me, what makes a good theory crafter is being able to first know and identify all of the ways that the model that they're using is flawed relative to the in-game situation that they're trying to account for. And second, knowing how to mitigate those flaws in order to make their analysis as actionable as possible for that situation that they're looking at. You know your analysis is good when at the end of it you know exactly how to implement it in the game, and when you implement it, you get the results that your analysis said you would. By focusing on optimizing for the simulations too much, it can sometimes be more difficult to implement the findings in-game, and the results are less likely to be what was forecasted by your analysis. Toolmakers are somewhat culpable for perpetuating this problem because I believe that there is a single feature that could be easily created, and if implemented, would cause a paradigm shift in the way that people do theorycrafting for the better. The specifics of this feature is a bit beyond the scope of this video, so I split it off into its own video and you can click the card in the upper right to watch that video if you want, but the gist of it is this. Right now, our theorycrafting tools are good for answering questions in the general case. 
Sure, there are a lot of different fight styles settings that you can adjust in raid bots and etc. that will allow you to be a bit more specific with your theory crafting, but none of them actually look like what you end up doing in combat. They're generalizations. If a tool was developed to easily rip the boss movement data and add spawn times and so on from combat logs, and then convert it and format it into the fight style parameters in SimCraft, that change would allow theory crafters to model for realistic in-game scenarios, rather than just generalized ones. Now, I realize it is a bit of a bold claim to say that these tool makers have some blame for this and that the problem can be easily dealt with. The reason for this claim is the fact that while I may do a decent job of pretending to know what I'm talking about, I am in fact an idiot. And despite being an idiot and also having basically no programming skills, I built a working prototype of this tool in under two weeks. I'm intending to release this tool to the public eventually, but that's a topic for another video. The point being that if an idiot like me can get something working in two weeks, these toolmakers that actually know what they're doing could make something much better and also much quicker than I could. But for some reason, they haven't. So let's review the key points that I want you to take away from this video and then put it all together. All analytical methods and tools have flaws because they are not a true representation of World of Warcraft, and they also never will be. The trick is to identify the flaws in these methods, and identifying these flaws can allow you to better identify which tool or method is the least flawed one to use for the questions that you're trying to answer. The questions that you should try to answer with whatever tool or method that you're using are ones that would directly allow you to make decisions. As always, I request that you tell me why my opinions are dumb, why you feel you deserve a refund of the time that you spent watching this video, or what you think I should have talked about in this video but didn't. Finally, I just want to say thank you for watching this video, and subscribe for more.